little bit of delay in the feed. That's great. So, hey guys, good evening, happy Friday. Hopefully you guys have had a good week. Um, hopefully you're staying warm if you're somewhere where the weather is not so warm. Uh, it was 84 outside today, so, you know, another reason to consider Louisiana. So today we're taking a look at a bunch of budget watercolor options. We've got some from Dollar Tree, we've got some from Dollar General, and we've got three here from Five Below. So um, I know you guys are curious about this one. I'm curious about it too. But my plan for today is to just kind of work my way through them, swatch them on cotton rag watercolor paper. So I'm gonna give them the best chance possible and we'll see if they're any good or if they're awful. I'm honestly hoping they're kind of good because it would be great to have some half decent budget options to be able to recommend. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'll show you guys what I got. So these are Crafter Square watercolors. I got these at Dollar Tree, so you know, real luxurious. And they're temporal watercolors. And temporal watercolors are typically the kind of watercolors that are sold to really young children. Um, they used, well, tempera used to be made with an egg base. I'm pretty sure this is not made with an egg base, but I might be wrong. It tends to have a bit of a smell. It tends to be pretty opaque. Tempera and poster paint in the US are often the same thing. So these are tempera watercolors and you get five tubes. And although this looks like silver, I think it really wants to be white. And in general, they recommend that the use of this product should be supervised by an adult. It was intended for external use only and should not be ingested. Wash skin with soap and water to remove any incidental contamination. And they are made by Greenbrier International and they make pretty much everything or almost everything that Dollar Tree sells. So um, these will be interesting since they're temporal watercolors. I assume they're kind of in line with like children's watercolor and you typically can find temporal watercolors. They're the ones that are sold in like the opaque cake. So basically if it's not Crayola, Prang, Yarka, or um, Crazy Art or Mozart, it's or not Mozart, sorry, Rose Art, it's tempera. These were picked up at Dollar General for about $3.50. They are made by Crafter's Closet. Now see, I made this mistake. I thought Crafter's Square and Crafter's Closet were the same thing for a while. And they are made by, I believe, Art Skills. And it doesn't say anything about uh, what binders these use they are probably going to really reek. That's my experience with really cheap watercolors is they tend to really stink. These were picked up at five below for uh, $5. These are made by Creative Gallery, which is five below's art supply line. I've taken a look at a few of their alcohol markers in the past and they were, they can be hit or miss. I'm hoping these are a hit. And for your $5, you get 20 pieces. So I'm assuming 10 of each color and they actually list the colors on the back. And these are made by 1616 Holdings Inc. And that's in Philadelphia. This is by Art 101. And these are supposed to be glow in the dark paints. And I got these at five below for $5. And I don't know if these are watercolor or if they're acrylic. Thought you guys could help me figure this out. It also wouldn't surprise me if these were tempera but I've been all over the package and I, without opening it, and I can't figure out whether these are watercolor or acrylic. And then finally, we have the interest, the real interesting ones. So these are supposedly watercolors. I paid $5 and you get 24 of them, which when you pay $5 for 24 of anything, the containers they come in might be worth more than the paints inside. Um, and I thought, these might be like the jelly gouaches that you guys have been talking about. Um, so I thought they would be fun to kind of play around with. They all look semi-opaque. And I figure if they're any good, I'll actually try painting something with them. But what kind of drew me to this was that opacity and hoping that they're, they're, they might be gouache because gouache is a watercolor, right? So I think I'm going to start with the cheapest 
the Dollar Tree Crafter Square and then do Dollar General and then do five below. And you guys will just have to bear with me a little bit. I have kind of a small workspace, so. Hey guys, it's good to see all y'all. I hope y'all have been doing well. Okay, so they're, the glow in the dark ones are more like an acrylic or a tempera. All right. The best packaging. And I tried to adjust the lighting on this. It looks so blown out. So give me a sec and I'll fix it. It's so hard. I have a Logitech um, webcam and it's kind of difficult to find that sweet spot. Okay, hopefully that's better. And you know, whenever I do this, I'm always hoping it'll, I'll be wrong and it'll be something kind of good. So already these are metal tubes. So that's a good sign when they come in plastic tubes, that's usually not so great. You get 10 grams or 0.352 ounces. And the warning is the same warning that was on the package. Now, sometimes companies will private label, they'll buy from an existing brand and relabel it as their own. So that's kind of what I'm hoping some of these cheap watercolors will do. They don't really smell like anything, so that's kind of a good sign. Because at least they don't totally reek and the caps are pretty similar to your standard professional grade watercolor caps. I'm going to do the primaries first. Yeah, in between five and six would be the sweet spot because six is a little dark for exposure and five is like blown out. Yeah, I'm really excited about, I'm hoping the cup ones will be good. Um, I, can't, I kind of figure that for $5 for 24, you know, they, there's a saying, there's no such thing as a free lunch. I figure they probably won't be good, but I'm hoping I'm wrong. I've gotten some good stuff at Five Below before, so it really could go either way. Okay, this is the first time I've gotten any kind of liquidy runoff with these. I wonder what the binder is. I mean, they say they're tempera, but I wonder what modern, cheap kids' watercolors are using. Because tempera is typically like egg whites, I believe. Okay, is it silver or is it black? It is our first look at anything. Go, oh, 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 okay. They, it's very loose. And I was hoping some gum Arabic or whatever the binder was would come out and we could actually see it. No, no. But on the Dollar Tree note, they do carry small cutting boards for a buck and it's about the same as the Avery cutting board. So if you are in need of a smaller cutting board for whatever reason, I got kind of tired of cutting on the backs of my sketchbooks. Dollar Tree's got you covered. So I've noticed something and maybe one of you guys can let me know why this is. I like using alcohol markers when I'm doing my swatches to test for opacity because I don't have to wait a super long time for the the, the ink to dry like if I were using um, India ink and they're not going to cause a resist with the paints but sometimes the watercolor paints actually kind of reactivate the colors can any of you tell me like do any of y'all know why I don't they shouldn't And hopefully you'll see what I'm talking about. I am also a little surprised that so many people were interested in seeing crummy, well, potentially crummy watercolors today. I guess 
it's almost the same as watching a train wreck. And plus, I think everybody, we're all a little bit of a gambler here. We're all hoping that it'll be pretty dang good for what it is. I'm also using uh, professional grade watercolor brushes for this, so I am trying to give it the best possible chance. Oh, there is like no color in this. Once you add some water, it like basically turns to nothing, but it doesn't have a super strong smell. Okay, so these are the Dollar Tree ones. Oh yeah, there's not, there's not a lot of pigment oil in these. Which, who's surprised I paid a dollar for them? Oh, it's going to be a challenge to do the mass tones. So this also kind of opens up a good chance to talk about cheap, like when I say cheap, I mean like not even student grade, like cheap watercolors. Um, you can see they basically kind of melt to nothing. And I apologize, the camera kind of cut me off. I'm trying to get an overhead view on this. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, all right. So with these, um, I'm gonna have to add some more to each dot. With these, I think as long as you don't really wanna do watercolor, they're okay. Like they would be okay for a school project where you kinda wanna add a watercolor effect to like the paper but you don't want to spend a lot of money and you don't you're not expecting a lot from them and I haven't watched the frugal crafters video yet I know she kind of beat me to it with this so it'll be interesting to watch it after the stream so I can kind of compare notes these so far are kind of better than I expected and kind of what I expected. I have reviewed a lot of Dollar Tree art supplies. I'm pretty impressed with their craft line because, you know, it is actual craft stuff and it's at a price point that more people can afford. These are not fun. <laughs> These are not fun. I bet if I dried them in half pans, which why would you why would you do that? They're so cheap. You don't need to make them last. It's such an interesting direction, I think. They definitely get kind of scrambled eggy on your brush, if you know what I mean. They are chock full of optical brighteners because they already turned my water to mud which you know again I'm not really surprised by that these are weird these are weird because they're like right in that weird place where they're not good but they're good for five for a dollar and it's that weird spot where I'm like I don't know how I feel about this what's wrong Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. No, I'm probably going to sit and stand, sit and stand. And it's unfortunate because it cuts me off. But it allows me to actually see what I'm doing. And then for the white. I, I mean, you're not going to be able to see. So what I'm trying to do when I do these kind of swatches is I'm testing for granulation. And to see if there's any, like, color chromatography, like, if the color shifts any as you add water. Okay, so what I'm gonna go do, because this is a cup of mud already, I'm gonna go get a bucket and I'm just gonna dump my water as I go so I don't have to run to the bathroom to get fresh water a few times. That'll kind of give this a chance to dry and then I kind of want to do a grid. So I'm gonna start the grid and I'm gonna do a real cheap grid. And I also wanna try manually mixing these colors. So what the grid does is it's gonna tell us a couple things. 
it's going to tell us whether or not these colors will even layer. So you can do what's known as optical mixing. And it's going to tell us, tell us if these are super prone to lifting and turning to mud. And what manually mixing is going to tell us is basically will they even mix? Okay, so I'm going to give that a chance to dry. Go get some fresh water. Get a bucket of water and get a bucket. So I'll be back in a second. Well, not really in a second, but soon. reading the chat. I didn't catch who said it, but whoever said these might work for an accent color, that, yes, I think that's what it would be okay for. Like, if you were traveling and you forgot to bring your paints and you happen to be by a dollar store, you could use those for, like, spot colors and it would kind of carry it through. Sorry about that. And Joseph also told me that the music's a little bit loud, so I'll go ahead and fix that. There's music. Yeah, it could be an oil or a preservative used. That's a good point too. That um, with light, and this is with professional quality paints too. Um, I was doing the uh, PWC review a little while ago, and I, I mean, it's happened a lot, but it, I was like, hmm, I wonder why it's happening because it's not like I feel like it's probably not something you could Google and find out, you know. Um, it's like that real weird intersection of like super nerdy and. Uh, kind of esoteric we can't hear the music much um i turned it down a lot let me adjust it i 
the the I agree with Maddie's assessment on the Pentel ones. I only played with them a little bit. Um, I picked them up at a Mido, which is like a, a Japanese stationery store in San Francisco, and they were being sold at like student grade price, so like the same price you would sell uh, Cotman. And I was just kind of I like Pentel products in general, and I was kind of disappointed. Oh, I am polluting these colors, but that's all right. I'm trying to get. I made the mistake of adding red first. And now it's going to take a lot of yellow to get it to be orange. Okay. Something else about these is even at full saturation, they're kind of pastel. I have such mixed feelings about them. They are okay for Dollar Tree, but I just can't see. I, I don't know why I'm going into it with this mindset. Because I'm like, a lot of y'all are watercolor folks and I'm over here like... I can't see y'all liking this and it's like but that's not actually the point it was a dollar for five tubes is it good for a dollar for five tubes could I use it to make something the answer is yes I could use it to make something I would have to definitely pull out some of my art tricks but I have to put up pull out art tricks all the time oh just a little red on there it takes a lot of color to mix anything None of these are particularly intense. But like if you were doing postcards and you just wanted to do like a little bit of color and you really didn't want to spend a lot of money, these would be fine. green it wasn't bad I'm, I'm trying to make a purple we will I don't think we're gonna get a purple but I figured I would try so also like notice how much put I'm putting down in order to get anything because as soon as you add water it just basically oh yes we got us some purple mud it basically just melts the paint itself melts away but oh okay okay all right it's a purple it's not a bad purple you're not going to get it much darker than that unless you add in some black which you might not want to do too much because it might desaturate it too much but it's okay i think i kind of like them i oh, hope i think i'm going to end up doing a no becca don't don't do a painting with these you will regret it You'll be so sad. Don't do that. Let's see if we can get any half decent variation of color. So normally when I do a lift test where I try to see if the colors are prone to lifting up, uh, I let them dry for 24 hours so they can really bond with the paper. So I'm not going to be doing a lift test today just because that's not really... I don't have 24 hours to let it bond to the paper. Okay, I, yeah, there may not be any more in that. But it's not, the, the blue is not bad. Yeah, you get some nice, some half decent mist, misty effects with it. I thought these were going to be just the absolute worst. Like, I thought I was going to be restraining myself from cursing. I thought these were going to make me tear my hair out. And they're not. They are definitely not even student grade. They're some, we they're tempera. That's what they are. They are weak tempera paints. But they're not bad weak tempera paints. They're just weak tempera paints. Now, if I were painting on a cellulose paper, we might be, I might be a lot more frustrated with this. Uh, if I was painting on poster board, which is what I think I would be painting on. I, I'm trying to also imagine like when I was younger in high school and I had a budget of nothing, what would I be painting on? And I painted in my sketchbook a lot. 
So, and not, I mean, you know, sometimes that has its place, but it is not the best place for watercolor. And I don't think it would do so well. So interesting though. I wonder if Dollar Tree, like they have, Dollar Tree has flirted with doing crafts for a while because I remember when Tyra said they were selling alcohol markers and I hit, I hit as many Dollar Trees as I could and I could never find them. But I believe, I believe Tyra, I just, different Dollar Trees sell different things. And then some people are lucky and they live in like a test market. So they get all this weird stuff. Since moving back to Louisiana, we don't get any weird stuff. I am so envious of the people who have a pop shelf because it looks like Dollar General trying to be Muji or Daiso and I'm here for that. All right, let's crisscross applesauce. Some of this is still wet. We wanna see if it'll layer. It does actually look like it'll layer. Dollar Tree. You're kind of impressing me. But, and, and I also want to like, make it crystal clear, like, these are not indicative of how watercolor normally handles. These are uh, also not necessarily like good watercolor, but you know, if you have like an eight year old who's watching you paint and they see you working with the tubes and stuff, this could be, a way to emulate that and it's not expensive and it's tempera so it's easy to clean up and as long as they don't eat it it shouldn't be toxic and it's going to give them a lot of the same feeling they would get as if they were messing with the paints that you're using okay so these were the crafter square tempera paints uh i believe the packaging calls them tempera watercolor paints they're okay. They're okay for Dollar Tree. They're, they're weird. And I have conflicting feelings about them. And I don't like when I have mixed feelings about things because it makes it hard for me to articulate how I actually feel. They are not the worst. They are not great but I never at any point wanted to tear my hair out, which is impressive because I, I thought these would be real bad. I thought these were gonna be the worst. I mean, they're five for a dollar. How can they be any good at all? Ooh, y'all are, y'all are having some good conversations tonight. Hi, Bethel, good evening. Has, below has the markers. I have found the alcohol markers at um, at the five. I've <laughs> I want to hit the big five below that we passed because surely a five below that big has all kinds of goodies. But there is a there's a, quite a few of them. But I, there's two I've hit in the Metairie area. The one in Harahan is smaller. It's got a big candy section, and the one off of Vets is huge and has a big art supply section. So usually that's the one where I'm, when I'm like, hey, let's go to Five Below, that's the one I'm trying to go to. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside. These are the Dollar Tree ones. And that way we'll have a fresh, fresh start. This, I gotta go clean off. Or I gotta put, a, gotta put it to the side or something. So I'm gonna go get I need more ceramic plates. That's all there is to it. I'm going to go get a fresh one. I'll be back.
for round two. I know I don't have the lavalier mic on. Now I do. That was Crafter Square Temporal Watercolors in metal tubes, which a buck for five. I'm just kind of impressed. Okay. Let's, let's re-situate ourselves. Re-establish the table. Next, we're going to take a look at the art skills. These were three fifty for eight of them. I hit three Dollar Generals to find this. I hit two in Luling, and they had the acrylics, but they're... People, I feel like people in Louisiana must want to do art and not have a lot of money because Dollar General and Five Below's art sections are usually picked over. Oh, I was singing about how conflicted I was about the Dollar Tree watercolors. Um, and I was singing it to, uh, dun, 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 dun. Anyway, um, so the, I found these at the Norco one. I knew they'd sold them in the past. I thought about buying them to see in the past. And I was like, do I really want to do that to myself? Um, and then after getting some at five below, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm in it for the long haul. I am gonna do it to myself. So these promise artist quality, which as we've seen here on the channel, <laughs> can range all over the place. Brilliant colors and smooth finish. What, what is smooth finish when it comes to watercolors? Smooth finish is not something watercolor people are usually looking for. It says it's great for greeting cards, landscapes, crafting, hand lettering, portraits, and more. And these are 9.5 milliliters or 0.32 fluid ounces, so about the same size as the Dollar Tree paints if you're comparing them. I would say price-wise they're fairly comparable. You get eight for $3.50. I got five for one dollar. Now they also say that you can find inspiration on pinterest.com slash art skills and they offer us some watercolor tips and tricks. After painting, use a black marker to outline details to create bold graphic outlines that make your artwork pop. To prevent colors from getting muddy, it's important to wash off your brush when switching colors. Periodically replace the water in your cup to help keep your colors clean and bright. And these are made by art skills. And at Dollar General, if it wasn't made by uh, Crafter's Companion, it was made by Art Skills. So these are more like what I was expecting to see. I do think these are metal tubes, but like these kind of toothpaste caps do not normally bode well for watercolors. Oh, this is a fountain pen. A fountain pen is not going to cut open your watercolors. These already kind of remind me of the Daler, Daler Rowney Simply Watercolors from Walmart I reviewed a while back when I was doing all the reviews on the blog. So we will see if they are. Okay, these are metal tubes. They're like little toothpaste tubes. They have the color name. They have a, an approximation of the color. And otherwise, they contain no further information. We do get eight. There isn't a white in here, which... You know, honestly, I appreciate that because in general, when they include a white in these sets, that white is usually worthless. So I would always rather them seeing that I would always rather see them include an extra color than include a white that I'm not going to use. Where did my T square go? There we go. And we have eight of these, so I don't know how I'm going to handle doing the, the plaid test. I'll probably just pick like the most likely colors and do that. I was impressed that the cheap tempras did not have that horrible smell. that I can only really describe as like stinky. Not really, like, I don't know. I can't really, it's like a chemical-y smell, but it's like, it's hard to explain. All right, let's see if these smell like that. Uh-oh, that's another great sign. When they have 
Can y'all see it? The little puncture tip at the top just doesn't normally bode well. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll just start in order, I guess. Oh, oh, these are screw on caps and it doesn't really, <laughs> doesn't screw on. That's exciting. Who was saying that Dollar General had all these great art supplies and we were really sleeping on Dollar General? I swear, a popular YouTuber, they must have like a different Dollar General or they must live. Sometimes I feel like, and sometimes it's true, sometimes I feel like I live in an alternate dimension of art supplies and, and life because like, okay, you don't want to puncture. Um, my access and my experience is usually very different. I'm sure a few of you guys can identify with that. All right, so. Oh. They got a smell. I mean, I, I did shove my face in it, so. That's on me. And the caps, that cap went on okay. It was the brown cap that wasn't doing so well. So I really wouldn't be surprised if you got like one application out of them and then the tubes dried up on you because the caps are not, not really that well suited. Oh, okay, it's Art Skills Crafters Closet. They're a little runny. I'm not surprised. I am surprised I'm not seeing a lot of paint and binder separation. Um, just because with cheap watercolors, I'm used to ointment tubes. Yes, that, yeah, that is exactly what these are. And that's probably, they're probably buying ointment tubes and cause they're probably cheaper than like uh, metal paint tubes just because ointment is a bigger industry honestly than paint probably <laughs> oh boy my least favorite the, the absolute danger sign of cheap paints is when they come in plastic tubes like the niji paints just never have had a good experience no the smell is not giving me a headache fortunately it is not that strong <laughs> Yeah, hide, hide these paints after. Well, fortunately they were three fifty. My and I've I've mentioned this often. It's a hobby horse of mine, I guess. My big beef with cheap art supplies is that they don't ever really handle like an even inexpensive version of the same product. Um, so it, I feel like they give things a, a bad rap. Uh, watercolor is kind of the king of that, but I don't do acrylic, so I don't know if like apple barrel acrylics give regular acrylics a bad name. I also feel like apple barrel kind of makes it known, like we're a crafting acrylic. I guess these with crafter's closet in the title. When I say crafting acrylic, I mean like for painting birdhouses. With watercolor though, it all kind of all kind of falls onto, you're probably gonna paint this on paper, right? Territory, Ugh. yeah, this cap does not work. I was gonna put these, when I was done with all of them, I was gonna put them in little libraries, but I don't like putting art supplies that I know are gonna break out for people. So, hey, Bubble Moon, welcome. I don't know what I'll do with these. The white nice watercolor tubes they're sealed shut and the lids are flat no puncture thingy which means you have to get like a toothpick or an ice pick and you're going to end up contaminating your paints a bit by you know trying to be economical and stabbing multiple paints all right so we're going to start with crimson and we're going to work our way around a decent color range These don't seem to just fall apart the way the Dollar Tree ones did. The Dollar Tree ones are tempera. Okay, not bad so far.
not bad. If any of these end up being half decent and I feel like I could do a painting with them and not want to pull my hair out, I'll do a, like a field test video separately because I don't have anything prepared because I fully expected all of them to be frustrating. This orange is kind of mediocre compared to that red. The red was really pretty good, but you know, you can mix orange. Yellows seem to be a bit of a weak point for a lot of brands, so we'll see. What is also interesting is so far, these are pretty transparent. I wonder what pigments they're using or if they're using like dyes in a solution. Ooh, <laughs> that that didn't want to didn't want to graduate. Uh, I'm so sorry, y'all. My brain has just been falling out my ears lately. I've been losing words. I'm seeing a doctor, so hopefully we can get that sorted out. Graduation, granulation, ombre effect. These pollute the water really quickly, so to no one's surprise, they're probably chock-a-block full of optical brighteners. But for $3.50, I mean, you know what's going to be shameful is I think some of the paints I'm taking a look at today are probably about as good as some of the, the paints that are sold to crafters, like, um, like some of the stuff Jane Davenport has released in the past. Like, she charges a lot. That purple, uh, I'm not loving that purple. They're all a little soapy to handle, a little difficult to remove from the brush. I really have to scrub it on the paint puck. Ooh, ooh, that's a color. They're all, if they are using pigments, everything is very finely granulated and it kind of reminds me of like the Crayola color palette. Um, I kind of think they're using a dye that has been attached to particles because that's usually kind of cheaper to do than buying pigments. And you guys, can see we got ch swamp chocolate milk going on here. All right, so I'm gonna do a grid, really lazy grid. I'm not gonna do every color either because we got a lot of colors. so far do you think these are better or worse than the Dollar Tree ones I'm kind of leaning towards better and not just because you get more colors although that does help man that yeah that yellow just disappears on contact as soon as water hits that yellow that yellow is gone I can't I I can imagine putting these in half pans and letting them set up. I can't imagine that boating well. A few years ago, I, so Reeves, the company that used to make the really cheap watercolors, they're owned by the same company that owns Windsor, Newton, and Cotman. So I did a three-way head-to-head comparison one year, and I was kind of surprised to find that the two Reeves watercolors actually set up really nicely in half pans and they handle way better as a dried out half pan than they do, in my opinion, straight from the tube. So these could be like that. Yeah, they're, they're a lot like the Reeves now that I'm thinking about it. I have long since 
rehome the reuse set. But sometimes with cheap art supplies, if you just know a couple of tricks, you can get a little bit extra out of them. Or you can get them to behave a little bit better. Okay. See, see, this is what I'm talking about. You see how the black is sort of migrating? But it's it's alcohol marker. It, sh that, it shouldn't be water reactive. Hey, Dawn. Good to see you. Weird graininess in these. It, yeah, it's not exactly sedimentation, but it's like white noise, kind of. They use lacquered dyes. This is how chemists used to make alizarin crimson. I'm gonna have to look into that, lacquered dyes. I know about like lake dyes. Does the term lake dye get its root from lacquer dyes maybe? Like a lake dye is basically when you use a mordant to get the dye particles to attach to the mordant and sediment out. And then you can use those to make paints. All right, I'm gonna try a little color mix in here. And I should not have started with the darker color. Come on, back up. Yeah, these would get used up fast. So this is good in a way, because it kind of proves another hobby horse of mine. Um, Cheap watercolors are not necessarily more economical for long-term use because you're going to be using them up and replacing them, using them up and replacing them. They, they don't stretch. They don't last. Oh, that's making a weird, or that's why they included an orange because their orange is kind of funky. I bet I can mix an okay purple though. Let's see. If I can mix a half decent green and it is real. Oh, I already picked some green up. It's really hard to get clean colors with these because they pollute the water so much. Like even just this little bit has my water cup really nasty and I have a paint puck in the bottom of it to help scrub, but the paints really, really want to glom onto the brushes. Now, this might work a little bit better. Might, with fully synthetic, I'm using silver black velvet, which is a mix of uh, a little bit of squirrel and some synthetic. Oh, I do not know. I don't know about that. It's, mm. these make some pretty muddy mixes. Final mix attempt. Let's do a purple. It's okay. It certainly is more visually interesting than the purple they included. I know my arms all on top of it. have only used the Blick Artist watercolors a little bit. Um, by the time I was ready to give them a shot, I had already moved away from Savannah, so it wasn't convenient for me to pick up a tube here and there to figure them out. But I've actually been wanting to do, because I'm kind of running through the gamut of professional watercolors, and I'm kind of at the point now where um, I'd like to start comparing store brands so I have used Utrecht watercolors and those were fine. I think Utrecht is manufacturing the Blick ones, but don't, don't hold me to that. Um, if that's the case, what I know about the Utrecht ones is that they're manufactured in like Brooklyn. I cannot imagine these would stand up to a light fast test. That 
that yellow just melts. It takes so much paint to get any color with that yellow. I mean, I'm not surprised. I paid $3.50 for these. $3.50. So. I am surprised they don't stink. I am surprised they're moderately decent. They don't make nice mixes, except for that purple. That purple's okay. But they really don't want to mix. And they really pollute the water. And of course they have no pigment information, so who knows what they are. All right, what do you guys think of the eight tubes for $3.50 Dollar General Art Skills watercolors? I, I, man, this is why I quit doing individual reviews of these cheap watercolors because there's only so much I can say about them. It's always like, eh. like if you can afford better, please get better than these. They are very, eh. um, I also am not a big fan, me personally, I'm not a big fan necessarily of giving younger kids crummy stuff, like stuff you didn't like and you know it's crummy. I know they'll still be appreciative, but like with color mixing or with color layering, you start running into hurdles and they're gonna become frustrated. I'm just a bigger fan, I guess. If they're young enough that they, they, that Crayola would be good, give them Crayola. And if they're older than that and they can be responsible, maybe start weaning them onto student grade stuff or I don't know. It's weird because there's some really good cheap watercolors out there like the Mozart Como Rebi set, which I've talked about a bajillion times and I really like it. Uh, the Paul Rubens tubes are good and they're very affordable depending on where you find them. Um, so I don't know. I, I know there's a market for this. I just, I'm not it and I'm kind of like struggling to think who would be it. Maybe if you were doing going back to what Maddie suggested earlier, like as an accent color, or you were just doing local color and you weren't um, trying to do any mixes and you weren't trying to do a lot of layers, these would be okay. Um, I don't know. I love when value stores sell art supplies because it makes it more accessible to more people. These are okay for the for three fifty. They're okay. That's what I gotta like remind myself. I gotta keep centering myself and be like, but for what you paid, are they all right? For what I paid, they're all right. They were three fifty. They were very cheap. Would I get frustrated using them regularly to paint? Oh boy, yes. But they were three fifty. All right. So I need to clean my plate again, but with the Dollar Tree ones, they literally just washed off. There was no scrubbing involved. There is no staying power to those paints. Next, we're going to take a look at the creative gallery. Oh, that was another thing. Let me, let me go back a sec. Okay. All right. Here is something I can actually speak to. They promise artist quality. Are these artist quality? No. These promise fine artist material. Gee, guys, what, what do y'all think? We will find out. I paid $5 for 20 tubes. We will find out. Uh, do I want you to send me the pop shelf? It's a brand that's apparently popular. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would definitely be happy to try the Mott Mart. Uh, hit me up on Discord and I'll cover the cost and the shipping. I appreciate it. I also just want to wander the halls and look at things because I hate Dollar General. It is such a claustrophobic experience. Oh, oh, so I looked up a review of Pop Shelf. So Pop Shelf is something that Dollar General is trying out and there's one store and it's in Henderson, Tennessee and it 
popped up after I'd moved, so I never got a chance to go. But Melani's gone, and um, she had glowing things to say about it. So of course I'm like looking it up on Google Maps. Like, are there any in Louisiana? Because Dollar General and Dollar Tree are very popular here. We are all poor. Um, so there's just that one and all the reviews, all the reviews mention two things. They mention how well organized it is and how clean it is because Dollar General is neither of those things most of the time. Yeah, usually no pigment information means dye base. And that's not always true. Like Rembrandt watercolors, you really have to dig to find their pigment information. But if you dig hard enough, you can find it. But with those super cheap watercolors, yeah, it's probably dye based. Oh, Allie went too and said it was Ike. I mean, I compared to regular Dollar General, it sounds amazing. Oh, um, Melanie's up in the chat. I may be mispronouncing your name. I'm so sorry. M-A-I-L-E-L-A-N-I. -E All right, I am going to go clean the plate and probably sing dumb songs about Dollar General watercolors now. Because that's how I roll. These are not super good. really hard time with phonics when I was a kid. Um, I loved to read, but my pronunciation of words was all over the place when I was a kid. So if I'm saying something wrong, let me know. I appreciate it and I'll try to fix it. Oh yes, a wash bin. I was just thinking, I was wondering how many people, how many professional artists have a workroom with a sink in it because that's so much easier. Uh, this is a rental, so I don't get any say. I can't even I can't even put stuff on the walls because she has a problem with it. I can't even remove. She has so many paintings in this house, and I bump into them when I'm cleaning, and I can't even remove them because she doesn't like it. So um, <laughs> there's so many things that I would like different. It just gives me something to think about. Okay, so. These were purchased at Five Below. Speaking of Five Below, uh, their website has way more stuff than what I've seen in the stores. So with stores like Five Below, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, they typically restock what's popular and what sells in the area. So if you live in an area where art or painting isn't really that popular, they're not gonna have a lot for you. But if you go to the website, if you want to, you can order you know, all kinds of stuff. With Dollar Tree, you usually have to order like a minimum of 20. So it's a lot like Oriental Trading where you're buying in bulk probably for a class. With Five Below, you can buy one off. And oh, oh boy, I uh, re-upped my Five Below craft kits recently. And I'm waiting for those to come in because they had so many more kits on the site than they do in person.
right, let's let's crack into these. They have the ubiquitous tape dot to doom. And I'm glad I started early. I knew watercolor would take a while and we had a lot of watercolor to get through. Oh boy, these are <laughs> um, almost the same types of tubes as the Dollar General ones. I'm a little nervous. These are 0.2 fluid ounces or six milliliters. And each tube, they are metal tubes, so at least they're not the, the weird plastic tubes. They are the ointment style tubes with the little piercer at the end though, which is not my favorite. And uh, they don't include a lot of information on them. They have creative gallery, watercolor, mid yellow. They have the size. And then on the back in super tiny and almost impossible to read lettering, it says conforms to ASTM D4236, which I assume means it won't give me cancer, but I don't actually know. Now, I also assume that because there's no, you know, in the state of California warning. These were made in China. And on the back, it pretty much just has the colors that are in the set. And if you are getting the five below markers, I have a couple of uh, videos on them on the channel. I recommend you get the brush tip ones. Don't get the ones that look like Prismacolors because the nibs in those are not attached to anything and they just rotate, which you wouldn't think would be annoying. But if you're coloring something, it makes coloring a challenge. But other than that, they're okay. Um, I was able to complete a piece, an art, complete an art with them without pulling all my hair out or screaming, not even once. Although I did grumble about the rotating nibs. We've got 20 colors to do, so I don't know if we can get them all on the plate, but I'll try. We have a lot of places to buy art supplies and some parts of the country are way better about that than others. Um, like New York and San Francisco, it basically any population dense area with the exception of New Orleans is gonna have dozens of art supply stores. New Orleans has three, I think, if we're counting the Metairie area. Um, one of the downsides about the American art supply market is they, like for children, or very budget grade, like they would normally be very, very cheap. But in the US, they'll charge four times the price, depending on what it is. And um, I've only been to a couple of other countries, so I can't, like, I'm not gonna pretend to speak to what other people go through. And I'm sure, you know, different places have different accessibility to stuff. But like in Japan, if you're buying Winsor Newton win watercolors, they're like half the price that they are in the US and Holbein watercolors are much cheaper. So America's weird in that we have a lot, but a lot is very, a lot of what we have is very expensive and not very good. So it's like fast food, you know, like everything here is kind of fast foody. Got that all over my hands. Part of it is we don't necessarily have, or in the past, historically, we haven't necessarily had as big a hobby market for art because there was a period in the 80s and the 90s where they, and in the 2000s and now where they really pushed the narrative that it, you should only make art if you're gonna make money from it. So if you're not any good, back off. I don't agree with that by any stretch, definitely don't agree. I would love to see more people pick up art and illustration as a hobby or just for enjoyment. Um, but without that market of people who are just 
buying the supplies because they just like the thing and they don't expect to be any good at it and they don't care if they make money from it, you're never going to be able to sell in the kind of volume you would need to get the lower price points. Very expensive, but very student grade. Yep. Oh, these are, these are explodey. They are very loose. I do not like that. What binder are you using? See, I don't like getting stuff all over my hands because it gets all over everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I'm showing you guys the tubes like I would if I were doing like an unboxing swatch. You know, the careful, and this is what this color looks like. Because it's, it's all very cheap and liquidy and vaguely unpleasant and I wonder if those pots are just th this no no because you get more with the pots budget art supplies are weird it's so arbitrary whoever is making these and then labeling them and selling them it's so arbitrary like why are these five dollars and you get 20 but the pots are five dollars and you get 24 oh and I keep forgetting to stabity stab These seem like they are very opaque as well. A lot of mass tone to kind of hide that there's probably not a lot of color going on in there. <laughs> there is a, there are art supply black markets. There are people who, when they travel to other countries, they'll basically take orders from their friends and then go pick all that up and the friends pay for it and last time I went to Japan I was really tempted to do it but I've gotten burned by people telling me oh if you buy such and such for me I'll pay you back or they never give me the money in advance because I think I did tell some of my friends like hey if you want something make a list and send me with the money and it never happened so I would have been willing to do a little a very light amount of art supply black market I guess Oof. So that means when you order, you have to order everything. Or I, if it were me, I would like do it three times a year maybe just to kind of offset that steep shipping cost. Does, do you have the same problems with AliExpress? Um, one of my friends is in Brazil and they don't have necessarily the same problems with AliExpress, but buying stuff from the US is crazy cost prohibitive. And I believe Jackson's ships a little more internationally. Like uh, Blick will ship internationally, but it is at a crazy high markup just to ship to Canada. And you can't ship like squirrel hair brushes or anything that utilizes animal products. Which I understand, but they don't disclose it on the site. Like it's not up on the site. I found out because I was trying to send somebody some watercolor supplies and Blick was like, you can't pick something else. And then they never got, Blick never got back to me. So it's just kind of up in the air. I just love individually piercing each one of these tubes. See, this is what I call aesthetic art. And I'll show you guys in a minute um, because this looks pretty. This looks very artsy. This looks like art aesthetic dream kind of thing. You know what I mean? But these are very cheap. They are probably going to perform like hot garbage. Probably. Mm. I mean, the other ones only kind of performed like hot garbage. But I don't know. It's kind of like a, a pet peeve of mine to do aesthetic art because I feel... It's like watching repost accounts on Instagram and Twitter get way more likes on a piece than the artist who did it. But that's not entirely fair because with the aesthetic, oh, this one's gonna explode on me. 
they're not stealing from anybody. They're just using garbagey cheap art supplies to imply that they made a beautiful illustration with them. Am I gonna be able to get this one without stabity stabbing myself? Stabity stabbing myself. I don't want to get it on my five below my little pony shirt. Ah. See, it's getting all bent up. You know, when I get this thing open, it's going to go everywhere. Like, I'm not mad at them. They're, in a way, they're making art by using art supplies to make something that looks... Hang on a sec. Um, hey, Joza. No, I think it's G2, because the G1 ponies are a little funky looking. See, this one opened no problem. But it's like, I remember when the stupid round little cakelets of watercolor were very popular. I call them the Artist Loft watercolors, but Artist Loft isn't the only person who made, or only brand that made them. And those things were terrible. As soon as you get really vibrant color while they're wet, and then as soon as they dry, they literally will crack off the paper. And they're very, very chalky. And brushed letterers, according to Instagram, according to people's photos, seemed to love it. But they would take pictures of their lettering while the stuff was still wet. And it's like, why, why'd you even do it with that? Because you could have done it with like something more permanent and then sold it after, I guess. Penny shop for craft supplies online. I'm sure it's a thing. Ah, oh, possibly. It used to be, oh gosh, you know what it is? Wish. Wish, which is just like, good luck. Two, ta two tubes that will not open. feel like I could just do an ASMR channel where I just buy cheap stuff like this and just slowly crinkle and get like the good Foley going. For me that triggers the response and it makes me all sleep. Oh! When that happens I'm not docile at all. I, I, I mean, what, what would you prefer? I just like chunk them into the gar, I like do, dupe them on the plate and then throw them in the garbage can. I mean, if I could, if I can pass these on to somebody else, I would like to do that. That is some, one of the downsides of reviewing cheap art supplies is there's a lot of garbage. Oh, there's still two tubins I need help with. I need an adult. And um, it's just a lot of waste and I feel bad because it's wasted money and it's stuff in a landfill. So usually I do try to pass it on to, why is this tube so stubborn? Did it just dry? No, it's still mushy. <clears throat> Muppet hands, that's all I got. I do try to, pass stuff on when I can if it's good I will and I, but I know I'm never going to use it I'll pass it on to like a friend I know who is more serious about it oh yeah these are I did I did these two jerks an adult even oh I didn't see it I didn't serve the tubes they don't want to open if you can't open them, I'm just going to declare them unopenable. Oh. <laughs> they went everywhere? Yeah. Yeah. 
I thought I would feel it open. Uh uh. I've I, they've. Just, like, on oh the wow! It got it really got all over your hands. Yeah. I'm sorry. These tubes are very thin, and they're not easy to open. On the plus side, they basically turn to nothing when you add water to them. They like melt and not, not the way watercolor should melt when you add water, but the way cheap stuff melts when you do anything to it. That's a, that's a good color, even if it's not a good paint. It would 100% not surprise me if the, oh, the Dollar General paints and the Five Below paints are coming from the same factory in like China and they're just getting private labeled. I know Five Below does that already because <laughs> they literally sell stuff. You can find it same brand name on Wish. They have like these these brush pins. I forgot the the brand name because it's a brand name that doesn't necessarily mean anything. And I see them all the time and I'm always like, oh, I wonder if they're really good. And then I always talk myself out of them because they have the fiber brushes, not the individual bristle brushes. That's a fun color. No, the pink I just swatched. All of these are melting into nothing. Like, if you put these in a half pan, you would use up the half pan in one painting. And that was this paint. And these are definitely reactivating the paints. What colors do I like in my palette? You know, um, I have this big, let me show you. Let me take an intermission. Uh, I have this big old beaten up workhorse of a thing and it's full of colors and a lot of them are like pre-mixed convenience colors because that's easier for me. But I really, when I'm buying palettes to review, I really like to see a well thought out eight color palette that includes a cool red, a warm red. So, you know, like um, a more orangey red and a more pinky or bluey kind of red, a cool yellow and a warm yellow, a cool blue like ultramarine. I mean, a, sorry, sorry, a warm blue like ultramarine and a cool blue like phthalo blue. So that's six colors there. Um, a dioxine violet, a sap green, maybe a Viridian, but I really haven't been using Viridian. I've mostly been mixing uh, cool yellows with phthalo blues. Um, burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, and I like a Payne's Gray rather than a black, but a black is good too. Thank There's you. No way to open them without oh no, no, I completely or, understand. I thought about using an ice pick, but I don't even know if we have an ice pick. Yeah, these these are great. <laughs> these are real fun. I don't like when palettes include a white because I, I always feel like, unless it's like Chinese palettes, like Chinese watercolor palettes, I always feel like that is space that should have been given to like a color. But generally I like to see sets that have good mixing colors in them. I say that, but my, my daily driver palette, the palette I paint my comics with, is full of convenience pre-mixed colors. When I'm reviewing palettes, I generally don't want to see a lot of opaque colors because those are a little harder to mix and they are usually uh, more likely to turn to mud. But I'm kind of I'm kind of growing to love more opaque colors now because I did the Paul Rubin well I did the PWC review and then I did the Paul Rubens review and both of those are 
uh, more traditional palettes so they have a lot of uh, like vermilion red and they have like a lot of very light greens and a lot of um, sky blues and the way those layer is they kind of just give this really nice misty granulation effect rather than just like mud on the paper so I think a high quality brand that knows what they're doing with semi-opaque and opaque colors can do a good job of it but I still find I still personally find them harder to use so even though I have a bunch of semi-opaque colors now I keep them in a separate palette <laughs> to remind myself that they're not really for mixing they're more for like painting Naomi's shirts or something like that I kind of like the color selection in this but I don't necessarily like the paints And they are definitely muddying up the water. They are full of optical brighteners. Oh, like matcha. Yeah, it does kind of look like matcha. So I recently did, recently as in like the past three months, did the unbox and swatch and the field test for the basic set, the 12 color basic set from Rembrandt. And I thought their color selection was really weird. And not just that, but their, their Viridian would just not reactivate. So it was like a useless color. I couldn't use it because I could never get any kind of tinting strength out of it at all um and they included an orange which I always almost always think orange is a waste in a palette because you can so easily mix good oranges unless your paints are just poopy and then not really you can't really mix a good orange like that but I do think it kind of depends on what the artist likes to paint will kind of dictate oh, this is like there's so much opat so much uh optical brightener in there so much chalk is usually <sighs> title of the stream should have been like cheap watercolors make Becca feel things because I'm again conflicted because I kind of like the color palette they went with with this I could see this being a fun color palette for one layer watercolor or doing accent colors or you know very someone who is a very light hand with watercolor and isn't going to add a lot of water because these paints fall apart as soon as you add water and is going to ink on top of it or doesn't need to do inking they're weird not good but weird it's not a set it's not a set i'd find myself recommending to like anybody <laughs> maybe, maybe to a teenager because there's some there's some fun colors in this and i mean to be frank, a lot of the teenagers I teach are just, they, they're like uh, expanded universe brain when it comes to art supplies. A lot of them can MacGyver garbage into something really cool. Whereas I'm small brain over here because I'm like, I don't know what I would do with these. I don't like them. They're okay, but they're not great. Well, 
Well, these were the Rembrandt half pans. So these are half pans that Rembrandt theoretically prepared and tested and approve of. So I was kind of hoping their Viridian would work okay. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I didn't have, I don't have any problems with PWC's Viridian dried out in half pans. And I don't have any problems with, um, sorry. Paul Rubens Tubins watercolor dried out in like their palette, their Viridian reactivates, but I generally don't like using Viridian either because I usually use uh, like phthalo and a bismuth yellow to get like a really nice fresh green when I'm painting foliage. So like, I don't think I have Viridian in my palette. I think I use Daniel Smith's undersea green instead of Viridian when I'm when I want that kind of a color because I find Viridian feels fake like it's too clean for a blue green you know what I mean there's no granule to to me there's not enough granulation it feels like it's for candy and not like a, a watercolor that has some substance to it I don't know why I put all that paint down I know I didn't put much down to begin with is because I'm running out of room. What is with all of these burnt siennas being not great? Yeah, it's, it says burnt sienna, not Venetian red, so. Oh my gosh. That is pretty cute. I start off liking, but now I have a new favorite. Oh, yes, I gotta think about it though. I used to really value transparency over almost any other property when it came to watercolor. And now I really like colors that have, quality colors that have a little bit of granulation to them. So like bismuth yellow is a good example of that because it's, it can be a bit of a dirty color sometimes. It is semi-opaque and it can, it doesn't always want to mix nice, but for optical layering or going back and reworking some leaves or something that I've painted and I want to like adjust the color on them, I really like bismuth yellow because it will add more yellow back into it. Or like, um, gee whiz, the Paul Rubens tubes are such a good mix of semi-transparent and semi-opaque because you can kind of rework them and add color back in a way that isn't necessarily feasible with more finely milled watercolors like Holbein is almost too finely milled everything's very uniform oh have a good evening Tanner well, you know, I've never gotten a Viridian that had a lot of granulation, so I guess our experiences just differ in this instance. All right, let's attempt, let's attempt some color mixing. So I'm gonna, st I gotta put more color down. I'm gonna start by, I'm not doing all these colors. It's a lot of colors. Um, so I'm gonna do what I did with the eight color set and just kind of pick a few I should also disclose that most basic sets don't necessarily come with a Viridian. So I think I've only used like Windsor and Newtons. I've definitely used Cotman's. Um, I think I've used, no, not Blix Viridian. I've used Blix Sepia. I've used, if the set comes with a Viridian, I'll use it, but I don't, like I said, I don't really like it. So I don't 
if I'm putting together my own set, I don't seek it out. I think the PWC set might have come with a Viridian, but I'm seeing more and more sets coming with a sap green instead of a Viridian. And I think since sap green is kind of a warmer green, it's a better choice for inclusion than Viridian because you can add some phthalo blue to your sap green and you can get some really nice greens that way. You can add a warm yellow to a cool blue and get some greens, some nice greens that way. You can add a cool blue to a cool yellow and get some really, really nice greens that way. So it's kind of like how I feel about orange, like I don't need it. But I paint a lot of people and I paint a lot of cartoony people and I paint a lot of Naomi's hot pink background. So um, that's why when I do my reviews, I pretty much always caveat like I am a watercolor comic artist. I'm not a fine artist. I don't even really care for fine art all that much. I don't do landscapes. So it's such a your mileage may vary situation. And um, years ago when I used to read like wet canvas religiously, I was always kind of frustrated because they tend to have very narrow ideas of what art is. And they also don't ever take into consideration that someone might want to do watercolor for something else like picture book illustration or comics. Maybe their opinions have changed on that. I don't really know. Um, so I know the world of watercolor can sometimes be very, especially here in the US, like to enter a watercolor contest, you usually need to have what is, what's considered a fine art watercolor style here. And that can also mean you don't use watercolor pencils in your illustrations. You don't use gouache in your illustrations. It is just watercolor maybe with an underdrawing. You don't use ink in your illustrations. You're not trying to tell a story necessarily like you would in a comic page. So there's different biases in watercolor and that's something I always tried to, um, I always tried to kind of present an alternative here with the stuff that I do to kind of create watercolor tutorials and watercolor reviews for people who were not served by that because there's plenty for people who are served by that and do find it useful, but it's nice sometimes to get an alternate opinion. Oh, I'm glad you like the mechanical pencil reviews. They are fun to do and I like them because they're cheap. Don't appreciate big velocity. That's fair. And you know, we actually don't get as much Faber-Castell stuff up in North America as you guys get in South America. Oh, I bet I know where you've applied. Would it be TCAF? TCAF is super snobby. TCAF employs people to work administration, but won't allow those people to enter into the fairs. Like I made friends with a girl who was a henna artist who works as part of TCAFs, or she may have quit by now. She was on their administration staff and she was trying to fight some of their rules from within. And it was very frustrating. She was basically like, I'm just waiting for some of them to retire. Yeah, they didn't want me either, if it makes you feel better. And her advice was that I could probably be accept accepted if I ground my own paints and made my own brushes and stretched my own canvases. And I was like, so are the people who are making pottery doing all those things? She was like, no. So they, they have very interesting rules. <clears throat> A little bit hypocritical. I hope you do get in because I hope they've changed. I used to fight it, like I paid my dues and I would send them cranky emails about how their idea of fine art is kind of limited. And I obviously I wasn't making any change, but I thought they should know. Now, Handmade and Bound, if they're even still doing it, is put on by Watkins, which I believe is now owned by Belmont, which is like the Catholic college there. Uh, you might be a good fit for Handmade and Bound. I used to sell it Handmade and Bound and they are open to like any kind of handmade zines, prints, books, anything like that, self-published books. So they're a little bit more open to the fact that art isn't the static dead thing. I 
feel ya. Most, yeah, when I did, when I did cons, like anime cons, most of my money either came, most of my sales, because Joseph and I crunched the numbers a few times, were stickers. So many stickers. Stickers and commissions. But not like the nice, expensive commissions, no, the, the con commissions where I had to draw it at the table very quickly and they would often hang out and watch me which is fine but if I had to go to the bathroom or if I wanted to eat something it was always like oh you're not gonna finish my commission it's like of course I am but my hands are shaking so bad I can't ink a straight line you don't you don't want you don't want a commission in that state I do like doing con commissions and I love working with people who um are a little bit more patient <laughs> i know when you're like 14 it c can be hard to, to wait an hour for a commission you're really excited about but it's also hard to be drawing all day and not take any breaks and still crank out consistent quality artwork It is very difficult to sell an original painting for hundreds of dollars and most of them make their bread and butter by licensing their paintings to like li licensing prints of their paintings to like hotel chains and stuff so i feel like we're not necessarily super honest about how we make our money not i not me i don't do that but you know what i mean like the fine art one that people don't necessarily disclose because it's not glamorous and it's not wildly impressive all right let's let's do some let's do some some play it here they the color mix sorry it is who i've been talking for two hours it's no wonder my brain's starting to go um the colors mix better than i thought there are a lot of very opaque colors in this set without it being gouache so it's not gouache levels of opaque but it's like muddy watercolor levels of opaque oh and i apologize for some reason youtube is having a real hard time with the stream tonight so bear with me there is a nice range of colors and a lot of really fun colors fresh colors i mean you know not not useful for like color mixing but useful for you know, if you're painting in a sketchbook and you want to color somebody's shirt in, there are some colors that people actually wear. I feel like all of these are going to end up getting relegated to, if you're using this for like one layer watercolor and you're not trying to mix a lot of colors, it's probably fine in your sketchbook. It's probably fine in your, like, if you forgot to bring your watercolors and you're going on a trip to bring them along. Yeah, the purple red is nice and there's some nice sedimentation going on with it as well, which is frankly kind of surprising. I didn't see that coming. Yeah, that's uh, what Hema said about going to the con with 30 bucks. That's that is that demographics. That's what they got. Um, so a lot of them want to be able to buy something from every table which I respect, it's their money, and it's nice that they wanna support as many artists as possible. So they will be very, very picky about what they buy, which means they spend a lot of time at each table talking to the artist, or in my instance, they'll spread out every sticker I've made on the tabletop and spend 20 minutes deliberating over a dollar sticker. Sometimes I just wanna give them the sticker, but then I would be uh, cutting off my own nose to spite my face. So I both like, I both love cons and con kids and I am so tired of cons. The plaid, they plaid it okay. 
there wasn't a lot of color lift up or mud. Oh, but you know, I, so, and Joseph can tell you this, I always brought original art to sell. I always brought a lot of original art to sell. And one of the other big sellers were my mini con watercolors, which were like, <coughs> I need to get some water. Eight by eight watercolors done with Sakura Koi paints. So cheap materials, cheap paints. Um, and they were just meant to be like an impulse buy, but you actually got an original piece of art because the eight by eights were always originals. And I sold them for like crazy low prices because I'd paint them in like batches of eight. So I'd do eight of them at a time in the evenings. And um, prints are just so much easier to haul. They're, you can sell them at a lower price point. The margins are so much better. So I get why artists are selling prints. Like the market doesn't necessarily want to buy originals. They're not interested in this is an original piece of whatever. They're interested in this is my best girl. This is my favorite character. I have an entire wall of prints of her. I want one more print. I would have loved some loquat tea. That would be a big help. But, but yeah. Ooh, ooh, I am such a weird, I'm such a weird case. Um, there's so many artists here on YouTube who are getting into like making stickers and selling like printables and stuff like that. And I feel like I'm just such a weird, weird outlier case. Cause like I was doing that, all that stuff like five years ago, but my online, sh like I would sell bonkers at a con and then see no sales at all online. So I, obviously their art is cute as heck and they've got some cute concepts and that's definitely a big part of the sales, but. Ooh, ooh, some, I'm gonna show you guys ooh, some of these paints. They've been drying off to the side and they definitely dry like they're full of optical brighteners. All right, so next we got the glow in the paint, glow in the paint. Glow in the dark paint set. Go ahead and dump this in my bucket. That bucket is actually very handy for this. Unfortunately, I still have to rinse the plate under a tap. And I have heard from the chat, ugh, these are so full of optical brighteners, I'm still getting chocolate milk even with a refill. Usually that only happens if I allow my paint water to sit overnight. <laughs> Cause I was too lazy to change it out before I went to bed. Oh no, I'm not, I'm not dumping on them buying best girl, not at all. Um, it's just a, a different, uh, mind, different mindset. Cause like me, best girl is Kara. So when I go to cons, I commission a bunch of artists to draw Kara or to draw Naomi. So I want original pieces from those artists of my babies. Um, but that's, that's the difference. Like if I were 14 again, I would be commissioning Catra. No, I would just be buying Catra fan art from Gundam Wing. All right, so I've got to go rinse the plate. I'll be back.
Now I'm just trying to sing dumb songs about the paints for y'all. Print versus art. Didn't Becca say some artists use their originals of fine art to scan to scan to license them? Yeah, yeah. Some artists do. Um, I would not say anime con artists necessarily are doing that, but a lot of the uh, professional fine artists who make a good living, who live really comfortably, a lot of that is licensed art. Like Mary Engel, who does like, or did the like crabby old lady cards. I don't know if that's before y'all's time or what, but um, a lot of her money came from licensing that character to card companies. Or like Peanuts, Charles Schultz made a lot of money licensing Snoopy and the gang. Cause comic artists don't make money. Even newspaper syndicated comic artists don't necessarily make a lot of money. A little more discussed in the fine art field, not only in illustration art field, like comics and fan arts and prints. You know, to be real, um, they might talk about this more if you're taking, if you were attending an art school and you're specifically taking like large scale acrylic paintings classes. Um, at SCAD in the comics major, no, it really wasn't discussed. Like they, they did not per really, they prepared us technically in terms of skills, but in terms of getting out and talking to people and making connections, they weren't, didn't really prepare us. I mean, to be frank, it was a lot of guys and a couple of female teachers. And the common advice was go get drunk with editors, which is such a bad take. And just, just such a bad, it's such a bad take. So, you know, they might talk about it in other departments. Um, just, they didn't talk about it at all at the University of New Orleans. And it was very frustrating. Uh, in fact, one of my professors there was like, just draw a bunch of shirts for Threadless. And it's like, yes, one can totally pay the bills just drawing a bunch of th shirts for Threadless. That's absolutely not something that is voted upon by the community. It's totally in your hands. All right, I am checking out these glow-in-the-dark paints. They were $5. You get 10 of them. They are made by Art 101, which I feel like I see at Michael's as well when you get those like huge 100 piece for $10 craft kits that we all know and love. So I was already warned, which I appreciate, thank you, that these are thicker and maybe acrylic or maybe tempera. Uh, I just love when I can't tell what paints are. And um, these are supposed to glow in the dark. I am not gonna shut off the light, but I will get back to you guys and let you guys know if they glow in the dark. I thought it would be really cool to have some watercolors that are glow in the dark and uh, my friend Kabocha makes glow-in-the-dark watercolors. But other than that, I haven't seen them around too much. Oh, okay. They don't, they kind of smell like acrylics. Maybe a little, maybe a little. Sorry, I, I normally would say don't sniff your paints. But I, if you can't tell what they're made out of. So, Art 101, glow-in-the-dark. 12 milliliters or 0.4 fluid ounces, and that's it. That's our information. Not a lot of info. Ooh, not bold colors like other paints. They're already pastel. That's kind of what I figured, yeah. I wonder if they can be mixed. Ah, I can't get these open. Okay, got that one. Yeah, usually with glow-in-the-dark paints, uh, they tend to go with neon colors to kind of add a little extra punch because glow-in-the-dark pigments, when the lights are on, they're, they don't really have a lot of oomph to them. You have to kind of color them. There was another YouTuber. I want to say Nile Red, but it could have been Big Clive. I'm kind of thinking it was Big Clive. Nile Red has talked about glow-in-the-dark pigments before, but he made his own. Uh, phosphorescent, sorry. Uh, Big Clive, I think, is the one who ordered a bunch off of AliExpress to see if they were any good and kind of dived into like how they're manufactured a little bit. 
So, um, mixing paint is fun. It's kind of relaxing. No, quad, no, quad. The mug is hot. I will. Uh, your water's fine. This water, yes. Yeah, because I got a dump bucket. Sure. I feel like these probably are acrylics. And if that is the case, I will use my cheaper synthetic brush that I can a little more easily clean. Now the thing about acrylics is if you water them down enough, you can kind of use them like watercolor. They're just going to be like more permanent watercolor. And some people do actually use acrylics to do grise underpaintings and to kind of set the tone of what the painting's going to look like. My beef is I wish these tubes would disclose what they were because if they're acrylic, you handle acrylic a lot differently and you can do different things with acrylic than you can with watercolor. Like you can paint wood and have it outside if it's the right kind of acrylic. After this, we still have those 24 jars left. And I saved those for last because I wanted to incentivize y'all hanging out with me while I plow through these. I do too. I like the all over uh, body cut like from an aesthetic point of view I don't like that they don't tell me whether they're acrylic or watercolor but from an aesthetic point of view they're very pleasing to look at now uh, frugal crafter mentioned this and I second it you can use cheap art supplies like these if you buy them and you don't like them and you, you don't want to give them to somebody because they're really bad and you don't want to just give somebody something they're gonna be upset about you can use them to decorate like I was working on an art supply wreath and I didn't want to use like, you know, art supplies I really love for that. Oh, I kind of think these might be acrylic. They, they smell like solvent. They definitely smell like solvent. Why didn't they disclose what they were made of? That's going to make everything different. See if you, Disney princess sang a song about bad things. They're still bad, but they're funny. Yeah, these have like no, no tinting power, which is not surprising because they're glow in the dark and that's pretty par for the course for glow in the dark. Like, you know, they're, they really shine at night. Oh yeah. These are like, or they could be glue. They smell like very cheap acrylic, but they could be using glue as a base. Cause have you guys ever encountered that in, in your forays into cheap, 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 cheap art supplies? It, something says it's paint, but it's really just glue with dye in it. I love that. Cause look, look, it's like boogers on my, it's not like, like the water isn't like mixing in. Oh yeah, look at the solvent. They're reactivating the... You remember, a, probably like Bomber B remembers, but way back in the day when I did art snacks and I got like a shaka shaka shaker of like Molotol, I think. And it was like the kind that you do like the dots with. It was in like vomit pink or the bismol pink. And I couldn't figure out what it was because they were being real coy with what it was. And I think we eventually figured out that it is probably an acrylic based paint with additional solvent to make it more liquidy. 
this is kind of like that and this is kind of how that smelled that had a really strong solvent smell whereas these like I'm, I'm, I'm putting my face in it you know these are not gonna play well with your alcohol markers they are going to make your water turn to mud no one's surprised by that these are weird very weird I'm gonna go well not right this second but I am gonna put these with my acrylic supplies because I'm pr pretty sure these are at least some type of acrylic something I hope I hope many of y'all were disappointed by the glow-in-the-dark paints I'm frankly a little I was hoping for glow-in-the-dark watercolors that actually had like a pigment component where you get some color in in the daylight and then a glow-in-the-dark component where you get some oh, that was nasty looking where you get some color at night and these have no no oomph no ah they're not even showing up on the camera that is kind of hilarious how weak these are these are so weak the saddest line of swatches yeah it's like I swatched water that's that's what these are they're water swatches all right so y'all know what i gotta do i gotta get rid of the cup of shame i'm gonna bring it with me and rinse it out good because if this has acrylics in it i want to make sure i clean that out of everything and then we can move on to the final treat of the evening dollars down the drain okay all right <laughs> the brush is gonna need some acrylic brush cleaning or mineral spirit I am not gonna use mineral spirit with those but I do have old masters paint which works pretty good with acrylic if you catch it while it's still wet Oh my gosh, Loquat tea helps so much with the tired voice box. So um, I have the 24 piece paints left to do. Before we say good evening after I finish with those, um, I'm gonna show you guys all the swatches so you can see how they dried because often with cheap watercolors, they look good when they're wet and then they look horrible after they've dried. The results might surprise you. This was fun though. Doing these all together and doing these with you made it so much more fun than like me doing individual unbox and swatch videos of these. And like, you know, like the thing about 
not good art supplies is if you're sharing the experience with other people, it's not a waste of money, it's funny. But if you're doing it by yourself, you're just mad because you thought it was gonna be okay and it's a waste of money. So for our final entry, our final entree into this series of cheap watercolors that we're showdowning, I have a 24 count watercolor paint set, also for five below. I paid a whopping $5. They do sell stuff for $10 there now, so check the price tag. And these are supposed to be non-toxic and water reducible, which is, a uh, yeah, watercolor is generally water reducible. Uh, not a lot of information. This product conforms to ASTM D4236. Color and contents may vary. Not suitable for children under three years, but only because they're small parts, not because the paints might make them sick or something. This is distributed by 1616 Holdings, and this was made in Ningbo, China. And there's a tracking number, and this is just kind of Five Below's house brand when it comes to their art supplies. This is what their stuff normally looks like. I am hoping those are like the jelly washes. Are they gonna be like the jelly washes? Probably not. For five bucks at Five Below and you get 24 of them? Probably not. Ugh. Sorry, the, the 24 tube that exploded got all over my marker and I can't toss it into the garbage because I know it'll hit the wall and get all over everything. That's another thing. When we have our own place, I need to get like children's room paint. You know what I mean? The stuff that like you can literally just wash it down with dish soap. Nothing sticks to it because I'm a child. have a good evening always hand sanitizer if it has acrylic paint I could see that working with synthetic bristles hand sanitizer because acrylics alcohol is a solvent to them so you can also use like rubbing alcohol if that's what you got with natural hair brushes you really want to avoid using alcohol based stuff because it'll eat up those brushes and you want to be careful with nylon brushes because Alcohol will dissolve nylon brushes eventually. So I figured these are going to be opaque because they definitely look like they're going to be opaque. I'm here for it. I'm fine with it. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun, huh? Painting the room. Okay, so this thing opens from the bottom. You know, I do appreciate that while they don't spend a lot of money on the packaging, it's all kind of reusable packaging, cardboard and stuff. And while there is plastic, it's not like it's blister packed. Like what I don't like about blister packaging is once you've opened the thing, ugh. Uh, <laughs> that's always a good sign when I make that noise. Uh, once you've opened the blister pack, it's just trash. You can't put it back in, or it's challenging to put it back in. <sighs> okay. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to try them out from the bottle. How much you guys want to bet these smell? That these smell terribly okay oh okay they got a seal fresh or a freshness seal that's gonna be like well, they don't have a tab or anything mixed feelings about this. That's the theme of tonight is mixed feelings. Sorry, 
I know that's terribly attractive. That's, that's the dread. These are supposed to be water reducible. You know what else is water reducible? Acrylics. And I never refilled my thing. We'll see. Maybe these are more like gouache than acrylic. I do like that the cap does have a like a foam freshness liner. And yeah, I'm gonna swatch from the lids. Wash is off okay. I need to go drag a trash can over here because there's obviously going to be a lot of waste. Have a good night, Maddie. I'll let you know how these turned out. I don't have high hopes anymore, and that's a bummer because I was actually, y'all know what I thought these were. I don't think they are that anymore. And yeah, it was actually the weird pastel color range that made me think like, oh, maybe it's like the Himi gouache. Oh, caps. Come on, come on. This, this is, did you guys know that Five Below is primarily aimed at teenage girls? Which explains my fascination with it. They've got great taste. I've got great taste. They're on a budget. I'm cheap. But it might explain why they are willing to invest energy in having a, not the worst arts and crafts section. I mean, even if I'm disappointed in this, it's still neat. It's still a neat concept. It's just not what I wanted. I should have known it was probably going to be like acrylic. But it's like real, real loose acrylic. Hmm. I don't know. It's, it's weird. Like... Maybe one could use it like an acrylic gouache. I've also just been watching too much Billiam on YouTube. I've been going through like all of his like blah blah is weird series, which is actually very charming. I thought I dragged that trash can over here. It's actually very charming because nine times out of ten he actually likes the thing he said was weird. have been weird tonight and it it's hard like okay first of all I bought these thinking they were all watercolor with the exception of the Dollar Tree tempera watercolor because they disclosed it was tempera from the get-go but all of the five below stuff I was thinking it was going to be watercolor so um it being something else and I have I took I took an acrylic class in college but I don't like acrylics and I don't like painting with acrylics and I so I I'm what I'm saying is I don't ever talk about acrylics on the channel because I don't like them and I don't research them and I don't spend any time with them so I don't feel like I have anything valid to add to the conversation about acrylics and it's also why I don't really do a lot with gouache is I just gouache and I are not really friends so This could be a, a weird hybrid. It, it 
it smells like very cheap acrylics but I'm not getting much opacity you see that up there oh what give me a break even acrylics even acrylics will like blend out a bit with water if you catch them while they're wet but I am painting on cotton rag watercolor paper and not canvas and not prime canvas oh this is no have a good evening Dawn I started this early because I knew this was going to drag out forever. Yeah, yeah, the app, yes, the apple barrel paints would be easier <laughs> to use than this. And I do actually use the apple barrel paints when I'm doing like um, just other stuff like chill streams and stuff on the channel because they're affordable and I just don't care enough about acrylic to be picky. This, I swear, this segment is going to add an extra hour because I can't actually remove these foil seals by hand. So, oh, oh, this one's dry. Well, that's exciting. Got a little drama in tonight's program. No, not totally dry. Just thick. Let's... Let's glop it on and see if we can get any. Oh man, the opa the opacity in this silver runs out real quick. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm not. These are not. These are watercolor brushes, so they're very soft, and that's not really great for gouache. Uh, not gouache. Sorry, it's not really great for acrylic. Acrylic. You might want to use like hog bristle or synthetics, or synthetic hog bristle, of which I have none. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think these paints would stick to a canvas either, to be real. Ah, these these are a, these are a mess. What is tie below? I do wish. So they they're doing a partnership with an illustrator, Andrea, I, I'm sorry, I forgot her last name, but I saw her a little bit on the site when I was buying way too many craft kits. And um, her art's really cute, but the collaboration doesn't go very far. Um, it's like some mechanical pencils that are in bright colors, a couple of notebooks that feature her art, a mixed media kit that features canvases with her art pre-printed on it for you to color, and then like a set of neon brushes. And I know this is asking for too much from a store like Five Below, but I'd like to see a deeper collab than that. Like, I'd like to see if they're gonna do that, find an artist, find what she likes, and then like what material she likes or he likes, and then try to source where they're getting their stuff. Like, you know, like you can find kind of a half decent, affordable, counterpart to to private label and then have that artist like do some tutorials on the website or have them do some tutorials on Instagram live or something like that you know what I mean so like you're not oh when did I hit this so that it's not just like their art on a couple of things it's like a deeper collab but I mean I feel like I I say and wish for that often and I'm not gonna get it oh yeah Mossery has man some okay I like Mossery sketchbooks I have a couple they're so expensive though I'm not gonna drop 30 bucks on a sketchbook and then use the sketchbook you gotta be kidding it's gonna sit on my shelf I have to stab every single one of these. It's truly arts and crafts night up in here. Oh, that's neat. Okay, that's deeper than I thought. I knew they were doing, um, like they would work with artists and have those artists art on their sketchbooks. And I assume they either paid a licensing fee for it or 
the artist got an affiliate something like I, I would hope the artist received some form of useful payment in return for the use of their art but I didn't realize they were actually making sketchbooks that were a little bit deeper than that because that's cool as all get out I would I would drop 30 bucks on that I I'm a sucker fool I would pay that money especially for um it's way more common in like Japan to treat illustrators and comic artists like they have something valuable and useful to teach uh, in the U.S., not so much. So it's cool that they went with somebody who has a more cartoony art style. Although I don't think Monster is based in the U.S., but you know what I mean. moving so slow with this these are so weird I kind, I kind of want to do like a piece with them but they're weird they're not opaque like I hoped but they're not watercolor they're a, they might be temp they might be like a cheap tempera when you start when people don't disclose when companies don't disclose what materials they're using and they start like using cheap substitutes, it gets really difficult to know what you can do with a product because at basically everything you've learned about handling that product in its normal form goes out the window. And I'm not talking about acrylic wash, which says in the name what it is. I'm talking about like this stuff, which is not watercolor, but it said it's watercolor. And then it's also like, it's water reducible. And it's like, to be fair, water reducible and watercolor, I mean, water is the vehicle of watercolor when you're applying it across the paper. It's in a binder, but unlike acrylic, you're meant to really water watercolor down. Yeah, you're meant to really water watercolor down. But with acrylic or whatever this is, If you want to reduce it like that, you do, you might want a different carrier agent. It, does the Hemi stuff smell funny? I've never, I haven't tried it because I'm not a big gouache person. I mean, you know what I mean? Like if a friend of mine had it, I would want to like play with it a little bit, but I'm not going to go out and buy it because I'm going to use it like five times and then be like, I hate gouache. Not that I don't like gouache art. I don't like using it. Hey Shadow, good evening. These are not, are the jelly, jelly, I imagine the jelly ones having the consistency of pudding. I guess this is like the consistency of pudding. It doesn't have any like jiggle to it. Well, that's at least sort of uh, opaque. I wanted to like you, but I don't even know what you are. Weird smell as I'm sitting here sniffing paint. Please don't do that. It is not a good idea. You will kill brain cells. These don't have like a strong solvent smell the way like nail polish or model paint would have, but they don't smell like nice acrylics either. I always think of nice acrylics like golden as having like a gentle plastic smell. Oh. They have like a stinky smell, like a like a school paint smell. So maybe they're tempera. Tempera. 
tempera or weird cheap gouache. Well, that one has some opacity to it at least. This is what I get for <laughs> for having putting any hopes on Five Below. But the thing is, I have bought Five Below fountain pens before and they were okay. I liked them. I used them until the carts were dead. And I have purchased their alcohol markers and their alcohol markers are <laughs> very hit or miss, but they function as alcohol markers. You can use a blender marker with them and they'll blend. It's fun to play with, but it doesn't mix super well. I wonder if it's the, do they dry out in the, in the jelly tubs? I know some of them have like a little, there's so much like pudding cups. They have, some of them have like a little click top and some might not. See, I was kind of hoping these would be like that because if I liked them, then I would buy the Hemi set, which for gouache is very affordable and it's in a format that's a little easier for me to use. Or Hemi, however, however it's pronounced. Okay, so they then, from what I understand, they come with like a, a foil cap and that's it. See, that's what kind of kept me away from them was that I was like, I don't paint enough with gouache for it not to die in a week. weird Korean set. Is it the past watercolors? <laughs> well, it's not turpentine, but you shouldn't smell alcohol markers either because they have a tendency to give people migraines. And just in general, when you don't know what the solvent is, you know, you don't know what the solvent is. It's just best not to like get a big old whiff of it. Yeah. Okay, that's what I kind of figured it was, but I was hoping it was wrong. I was wrong. That the Hemi, I was hoping the Hemi set would have like either individual little caps that you put on or uh, like one of those big silicone gaskets, like the kind you're kind of increasingly seeing on AliExpress to help keep watercolor tubes fresh. I mean, from what I've heard, Hemi makes some pretty decent products. I haven't actually tried any, to my knowledge, I haven't tried any of their stuff. Mm, I know that feel, especially during quarantine. Man, I have to like be real careful about, I used to watch so many other artists. Let me, sorry. I used to watch so many other art YouTubers and so many other artist channels and then I found that I was buying an excessive amount of art supplies because those artists made it look good and uh, I had to kind of really cut back on who I watch because I am way too impulsive. Although Lemia Crescent came back and I'm really happy because her channel was a really big inspiration for me and how she talks about art and approaches art was a really big inspiration for me. so. I'm glad she's come back, but I hope, I hope YouTube is good to her and life is good to her. All the jelly gouache, yeah, probably so. That all the jelly gouache comes from the same factory. I spent a lot of time on looking, just looking, I promise. I spent a lot of time just looking at AliExpress and you tend to see the same stuff over and over and over again, but with a different 
name on it. So at this point when I'm ordering art supplies, I pretty much order from like two suppliers. And if you're not on that list, I'm probably not ordering from you. Cause I've also gotten some real, really, really, really janky water brushes that claim they were pilot. Yeah, right. Well, what I tell myself is we're not really allowed to go out. And in America, basically you can go to restaurants, which is its own thing, or you can go shopping. Those are your options for most of right now. I mean, as the weather gets warmer, you can probably start hiking and stuff like that. But I know a lot of us have a lot of steam to kind of blow off because working from home is a unique adventure and some people thrive and some people are struggling. That's something though, I really thought art was gonna take off more so, I mean it has, but it also hasn't the way I thought it would. I, I really thought art was gonna really take off more during quarantine um, you know, when people were baking, or they're still still baking and pickling and learning how to play instruments and playing a lot of D&D, &D, uh, I really thought, like, learning how to draw and finally starting your comic were going to be, you know, a big deal during quarantine. But what I'm seeing more of is people I know who had insecure employment are uh, taking the plunge into going freelance with art. That's the the big uh, art plunge I'm seeing. I'm always down to try out a new art supply store, especially in person. And there's a few of them in Louisiana, a lot of them in Covington. I've got a little bit of a, a wish, list, wish list of places I want to try to hit up. I love looking at art supplies in person and touching and the smell of an art supply store. Like in person, I'm more likely to spend a lot of money buying individual things like single tubes from different brands. Whereas online, I'm more likely to be like, I'm just gonna get the set. Hero. You got bored watching my stream? I'm sorry. These weird things are just so slow. I love working from home. You can watch TV while you're working, but I'm a technician. I need to be in the office to take care of hardware. Yeah, I get that. I've been mostly working from home since I initially moved to Nashville so it's been eight years now but I really like not working at home. <laughs> I get lonely. I like seeing other people. I don't actually want to watch TV while I'm working. I mean like to be fair I'm recording a lot so I can't really watch TV and record unless I'm doing time lapses. My plan when we moved here, moved back to Louisiana, was I want to start offering private art tutoring, which I have some experience doing. I have taught a lot of art, both online and off, and I do still intend to do that, but I actually don't super like teaching online, especially not if I'm getting paid for it because it's just so, it's harder for me to tell if the students are getting what they need. So right now, I'm doing a Zoom thing with the local library. But other than that, there isn't necessarily a lot of work coming in. It's so frustrating too, because a lot of the ways I would want to promote my work or sell my work, it's kind of dangerous because people around here really don't wear masks, yet they still catch COVID. So it's, it's, it's really rolling the dice.
and I, I'm not necessarily, I mean, I don't want to catch it, but it's not really me I'm worried about. Like my mom is recovering from breast cancer and her sister who lives with her has lupus and my younger brother has diabetes. So, and then Joseph's family has their own health concerns. So I really try to be careful because I have a lot of people I love that I want to protect. Yes, please, that would be a big help. If you want, if you enjoy what I do here and you think your public library would benefit from some of my classes, please tell them about me and ask them to consider having me do a Zoom class. I feel a little bit differently about that because while I'm getting paid to teach, it's not like the people attending have to pay. So my focus is not making sure they understand. It's, did you have a good time? You had a good time. Good. Mission accomplished. Yeah, these are super weird. I don't know what they are. They are not watercolor and they are not opaque enough to be gouache. Oh, yeah, well, WTH color. We do have vaccines, but I am at the very end of it. And um, honestly, not to, whatever. The U.S. has, the U.S. has really struggled with COVID in that they don't want to tell people what to do and in some instances people probably need to be told what to do and they don't want to enforce any kind of punishments at least here in Louisiana they don't want to enforce any kind of regulations or fines they just want to beg us to please remember to wear a mask but you know half the people in the area don't care I still wear one but anyway so yes, there are vaccine programs in the U.S. Um, I believe it's almost at a hospital by hospital basis, not even state by state basis, because different hospital systems have different amounts of the vaccine. Like the auctioner system is tap; they don't have any right now. Um, so my mom and my aunt and my brother would all be eligible to get it for various health reasons, but they can't because there are no vaccines available. Yeah, it's a matter of who can go. So my brother did get the vaccine because he's a first responder. But that also means he needs, well, he's a firefighter, but that means he needs to actually go and respond to calls, which is a good thing. He should be doing that. And then it's also kind of a matter of who you know, because a family friend was able to get a, the vaccine even though he was told there were no vaccines to be had because he knew a couple people, which is just not, that's not a, I'm not, I'm not uh, begrudging him his vaccine. He's in his eighties. He's not a young chicken and he should be able to get the vaccine. Uh, I'm more begrudging. You shouldn't have to know somebody to get the vaccine. These are weird. I kind of want to do something with them. And I'm kind of like, what would I do with these? They're the thing is, I don't know what their solvent is. So that kind of changes what I would do. And then, oh, okay, all the ones. Set it on fire. Why don't I try to, You are thinking like kabocha now. <laughs> you know, I am sure that might not be the worst idea. The thing is, tell you very much. I don't know. I don't have that background in chemistry. Yeah. If I did, it would actually be a pretty good idea. <laughs> Because it would tell it would tell me something, um, and what I'm specifically looking for is like alcohol solvents. They can go to a different parish. Uh, I know here my doc is sending one. In state, not yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Coco is Joseph's brother, so he's in a different parish. It's it's just weird. I mean. You're from Louisiana, so I know you know. It's just weird here. Like, if you happen to be one of the people who knows everybody and everybody likes you and you've got a million connections, then it's great. And if you happen to be kind of shy or your family moved here later or um, <laughs> you have a family member who basically burnt 
all the bridges for the rest of the family, it's harder. And I'm not making excuses for that. It's something I actually really hate. I really don't like about Louisiana because you've got a lot of really smart people here. They just don't always act very smart. Um, but instead of just complaining about things I didn't like, I wanted to try to come back and help make a difference for the next generation. That, yeah, if you know the right people, you can do what you want. And, um, kind of, I kind of mixed feelings about that. I think if you are going to use that power to do legitimate good, then I'm a big use every resource you have at your disposal kind of person. Um, it's weird because I... My family has been in this area. My grandfather's family has been in this area for like 200 years. They, like in, in St. Charles Parish for 200 years. I didn't date guys that I went to school with because I'm related to half the town. You would think I would have connections, but I, and I might, I don't know. I'm very shy and my mom's very shy. So we never ask, so we don't ever know. Like, I'm, I will mention, oh, hey, I have a book, blah, blah, blah. It'd be great if I could do library visits. And then I assume if they don't offer anything that the answer is no, I don't ever have the courage to be like, would you please, with your connections and your sparkling personality, would you please introduce me to so-and-so? And I really should do it like that. Like, I'm a fool to not do it like that. I'm wasting my resources. Wanting Dr. Pepper and peanuts. <laughs> I heard of Coke and peanuts. I have not heard of Dr. Pepper and peanuts. <laughs> of, that's a combination for sure. I don't know how that would taste though. Get a shot and a Dr. Pepper in one go. Also down here, um, some, the, now this is a rumor. I don't remember who I heard this from. Please do not take this as anything because it is just a rumor. I heard there is part of the reason for the shortage in Louisiana is some the freezer door open. And I know that's happened in other states too. I don't know if they found it to be an accident or what, but we keep having problems. Well, it's so hot down here. But we also keep having problems with people storing the dang thing correctly. Or then they claim that they, they have them, but they can't get enough people to come and get the shots, so they're spoiling or something. And it's like, well, how are you letting people know that you have shots available? Like, you could set up, like, a text messaging system where people sign up to be on call to get the vaccine, and, like, as soon as there's one available... Because aren't other states doing that, jo aren't other places doing that, Joseph? Where if they have, like, because we were listening to what, this week on virology? And they were talking about somebody doing that. But the problem is you literally have to jump in the car and be there in 10 minutes. And it's a mess. It's a mess. These are also a mess. These are super weird. I'm going to have to do a lift test on these at some point because that would help tell me what they are. If they're acrylic, they're not going to budge. Sorry. 
begging people for favor is something I won't ever do. You know what? I don't know if it is begging for favor so much as saying, hey, I've got these qualifications and I heard you have a gap in your children's programming and this is what I do for a living. Consider me, please. Because sometimes people don't know you do something until you've told them. I mean, begging is a little more involved than just pitching an idea. I mean, in, in many industries, if you don't pitch your idea, your book will never get published. So, But I grew up feeling the same way. I didn't ever want nepotism to be a, the reason I got hired for something, but literally everybody in Louisiana is hired based on some form of nepotism. So I've kind of revised my opinion to be like, ne nepotism has its place because you got so many kooky people around here. You want to make sure you're not hiring someone who's going to just not do the job. So nepotism combined with actual ability and experience might be the better way to go. Well, the U.S. is handling COVID on a state-by-state -state basis, so every state can decide how they want to handle vaccinations, how they want to handle mask laws, how they want to handle closures, which is why, in my opinion, we've had a lot of problems, is you have some states that will say something is the law and then not enforce it at all, which is the problem we've got down here because they don't want to kill off all the small businesses, i.e. the bars, and the music venues and the restaurants. And then you have places that do total shutdowns and you're not allowed to do anything. And uh, it just makes, it makes something that is already kind of a painful situation take a lot longer. And then down here, you know, you're supposed to wear masks to go anywhere and you're supposed to keep six feet apart and we'll be at like the little mom and pop grocery store down the street. Nobody's wearing a mask. Cashiers aren't wearing a mask. And people are like literally standing on top of us trying to shove their groceries onto the conveyor belt before ours are even done. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Dollar General, in my opinion, is kind of an interesting, weird one. Because Dollar General is like half snacks. But they also have some home goods and a few medical supplies, but not much. Uh, and I have a freezer section. I think what I don't like about Dollar General is the aisles are too narrow and too tall. And I always feel like I'm going to die. <laughs> like, I'm always afraid it's going to fall on top of me. I love Walmart though because I know where everything is in Walmart whereas in Dollar General I don't know where anything is I mean they'll some of them will have the children's toys right by like the caustic cleaning stuff so all right so let's this is still drawing let's kind of recap So these are the Dollar Tree temporal watercolor paints. Let me make sure. Yeah, y'all can see them. You get five paints for a dollar. They disclose on the packaging that they're tempera. Tempera is a little bit different from watercolor. And I know my butt's in the camera. And uh, it is water soluble. I don't know what they make modern tempera with, but they used to make it using eggs as the binder. That's what kept the paint, the pigment particles on the surface you were painting. For a buck, these aren't bad, but they're not good, but they're interesting. So if you approach these and just kind of noodle around and doodle with them and figure out what they can do, because like I'm getting some interesting opacity and granulation with the plaid test over here 
but I think if you did too many layers, it would turn to mud. They mix decently well, but I wouldn't want to be reliant on these for mixing. So for a dollar, these are okay. They're kind of a fun toy. Next, we have the Dollar General paints. These were eight for $3.50. Uh, I kind of like the Dollar Tree ones a little bit better than the Dollar General ones, but I, and I'm sorry I keep clipping out of frame. Um, the Dollar General ones are probably a little more versatile because you do get more colors but they don't necessarily handle better. They handle somewhere between tempera cheap watercolors and cheap student grade watercolors that actually handle like watercolors. So they're, they're an interesting one, but I, I wouldn't recommend these. They're not unusual in a way that sparks my creativity. They're just not good. These are the five below watercolors. So these were 20 for $5. These are kind of interesting. They layer okay. They color mix okay. They are pretty opaque for watercolor. They're sort of more like gouache and watercolor than just watercolor alone. These would be fun to play with as well, especially for like one layer watercolor where you're not using glazes or layers to try and depict something. So these could be fun in a watercolor or just in a regular sketchbook because you get a lot of useful like fashion colors and um, that way you're not trying to mix these kind of colors because you're not going to really be able to mix them. There is some interesting granulation um, and they do layer okay but they will definitely turn to chalk on you. And they were five bucks for 20. <laughs> Making the, the old lady noises. These are the glow in the dark watercolors. These are disappointing. I can see them in person. They are super faint. They are so faint. <clears throat> Sorry about that. They are so faint that my camera doesn't really want to pick them up. They definitely have some kind of alcohol solvent in them because they are reacting with the alcohol marker that I put down for the opacity test. And then finally, we have this weirdness, which I was really hoping would be like the jelly gouaches but it's, it's not, but it's not like watercolor either. And it's not good. It's not easy to handle. It gets really gluey. It's just not good. Not, no, don't, don't spend $5 on that. If you have to get one of the watercolor kits from Five Below, get the 20 piece tube kit it's just better. It's not going to make you, it's not going to take forever to open. It's not going to be as frustrating to use and it just makes more sense. This doesn't make a lot of sense. And I don't know if it's because I'm not an acrylic or gouache artist. Um, but I don't think that's it. Cause I have used both acrylic and gouache. I think it just doesn't make sense. So of the five, we did five of the five we did today, my two favorites are the Dollar Tree ones because they're just weird. They're like chalk and that's kind of fun. And it's five for a dollar and they're just weird and kind of fun. <laughs> and the five below 20 piece set. Um, not really like watercolor, but not bad either. So anyway, <laughs> thanks for helping me get through Let's see. Let's let's see. I'm gonna get the calculator around. I'm gonna know how many how many paints I did today. Five from Dollar Tree, eight from Dollar General, twenty from Five Below, eight from Five Below, twenty-four from Five Below, sixty-five. Thank you for helping me swat 
65 different budget paints. We did five different paint sets. And now I feel like I don't have to do budget paints for a while unless there's something legitimately good. If you're on the market for budget paints, in my opinion, you're not really gonna find anything good for under $10. So your dollar dreams, your 350 dreams, your $5 dreams, you're not really gonna find a good set for that cheap. But if you're willing to spend a little bit more, you can get the Mozart Coma Rebi set which is up on my shelf so it's difficult to get uh that is 40 paints some are metallic they are kind of inspired by gensai style watercolors they're very easy to use you get full pans rather than half pans and they last a really long time because i use them pretty frequently for like edigame style paintings and they're still with me those can range anywhere from around 25 to 40 dollars depending on the whims of amazon um <clears throat> PWC watercolors in the U.S. at brick and mortar art supply stores, at least at my brick and mortar art supply store, are around $5 a tube for Series A. So that's pretty affordable for a big chunkin' tube. Um, do, 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 do. I looked at a few watercolors from Daiso and I haven't encountered any good ones at the U.S. Osaka or Tokyo Daiso's. But that was several years ago, and that doesn't mean they don't have them. It just means they didn't have them the times I checked or the time friends sent me them. So uh, I wish there were more Daisos in the U.S. Again, please, Daiso, come to Southeast Louisiana. The closest one is in Austin. That's like a 14-hour drive. Oh, what else is good? What else is good and cheap? The Paul Rubens tubes are good um, and they're going to last you longer. That's the thing about these cheap watercolors. You saw a lot of them just turned to nothing as soon as I added water to them. They might be cheap, but they're not economical. You're going to be replacing them a lot. So in my opinion, you're better off saving up and getting something a little more expensive that you're going to genuinely enjoy using. And on that note, I have loads of professional grade watercolor tutorials here on the channel. Uh, did you? Oh! No, Joseph Link, the cheap watercolors. Um, grab a link to the, uh, burp, 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 sorry, professional watercolor tube reviews. I don't know if I've separated them out, but. Water soluble gel. I, yeah, I, I would believe that modern tempera is probably made with a gel or like a cornstarch kind of thing. I could see that or um, like a seaweed, like an agar agar gel. Um, and if I knew what they were using, I could figure out how to use it myself. But com art supply companies, even professional ones, sometimes don't want to disclose that information. I can't imagine five below <laughs> disclosing it as much as I might want them to. cheap much cheap sorry I'm trying to find my you got it ah yeah. oh, you're the best around Joker's never gonna let me down I'm just in a singing mood tonight all right y'all I am fading super fast it is 10 o'clock at night and many of y'all have left to go get dinner and of course now is when YouTube decides to give to grant me to bless me with an excellent connection I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Uh, I'm doing the wood burning stream, weather permitting, on Monday, a little earlier in the day, kind of like we did the tie dye stream, so we can do it outside. So if you're interested in hanging out, chit chatting, and doing some wood burning, join me on Monday. Other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and I have a Shizen sketchbook review coming at you guys tomorrow. So, bye guys!